Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I can see a few people are still joining us, but it's two o'clock. Um, so now let's go ahead and kick this off. I would like to thank everybody for joining me today for the fourth installment of Sprout University. Uh, I plan on doing these webinars uh, throughout the rest of 2021, and I appreciate any feedback you guys have. Um, it's always nice to see if these are helpful, if, uh, anything that you would like for me to do differently, or if there's topics you'd like for me to dive into. Uh, today's webinar is going to be focused mostly on plant-based trends, uh, particularly a focus on broccoli sprouts and why they're healthy and why you should be using them in your, um, adding them to your diet, growing them in your facility, adding them to your shelves, or um, any, of the, any of the sorts. Uh, to, so my name is Silas Stoddart. I am the marketing director for Sun Garden Fresh Living. If you have questions after the webinar, feel free, go ahead and shoot me an email at silas.stoddart at sproutnet.com. Or you can call me at any time. I'm always happy to answer the phone and talk to someone live. Uh, my phone number is 931-526-1106, extension 126. Call me anytime. Be glad to help any way I can. I would like to remind everybody this is a live webinar, so things do happen. <laughs> if we experience technical difficulties, I apologize. Just bear with me. I'll get us up and running as fast as I can. Uh, so a quick look at the agenda for today. Um, if I can get my thing to work. Uh, first, we're going to start off with plant-based trends. Uh, we're going to look at the industry and what's happening in the food industry in particular and why are plant-based trends really popping up all over the world. Uh, after we understand the plant-based food trends, we're going to really focus on broccoli sprouts and we're going to look at why are broccoli sprouts the plant-based food of the future and why you need to be adding it to your product offerings. And then after that, we're gonna have a Q&A session. It's gonna give you the opportunity to ask me any questions you like. Um, I may or may not know the answer to everything, but I'll do my best. If I can't answer any questions, um, we can just touch base after this and I can put you in touch with someone that can. So for today's webinar, guys, we're going to do, it's going to be right around 30 minutes, maybe a little short. Uh, I know it's Friday afternoon for most of us, so I promise, I, just bear with me, I won't keep you here very long. Uh, so let's go ahead and kick it off with that. Uh, Plant-based trends and a focus on broccoli sprouts in particular. So I would like to start off and share with you our mission statement at Sun Garden. I, I feel like this is very important uh, to the industry and to uh, who we are. So I'd like for you all to understand where we come from. Uh, it's a new approach to healthy eating. So our mission here is superfoods that nourish. It's a powerful source of nutrients with respect for the environment, outstanding values, uplift and energize, true by nature, and to safeguard with the best quality systems. So with that said, I would like to kick us off with a quote from one of my personal favorite movies, Ratatouille. Uh, and it goes something like this. This much I know. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. <laughs> I think we can all relate to that one. So let's go ahead and dive right in here, guys. So uh, let's start off with the human diet. Um, this is just some, some basic knowledge. Everyone's aware of the human diet, but I, I really think we need to kind of look at it and really understand what's going on in our diets to understand why this plant-based trend is popping up. So um, herbivores, maybe not necessarily omnivores. Um, let's take a look at a myth. This is a myth that it's it really, it's hit powerful to me because I always assumed that um, our teeth was a major reason why we should be eating meat. Um, so uh, do you guys think, you know, that our little canine teeth show that we're natural meat eaters? If so, well, you're not alone. As I said, I believed it too, uh, but we're wrong. Uh, consider this how carnivores eat. I mean, could you literally I mean, do you, you have the stomach for it? Could you snatch up a rabbit and tear into its flesh with your bare teeth like a lion does? I couldn't. I don't know about you. Probably not. So uh, some facts here. So carnivores have sharp teeth. I've, I've included a skull of a wolf here and claws. This helps them to rip their prey apart, tearing off chunks of raw meat and wolfing them down without the aid of a knife and fork. Their acidic stomachs 
can help to digest flesh quickly, and their short intestines allows for the rapid expulsion of rotting meat remains. So humans, mm, we're a little different. We're built a little different. We have soft fingernails, not claws. Our canine teeth, well, they're small and blunt, and you really, there's no chance of penetrating a hide. Not to mention our intestines. You know, we have lots and lots of intestines packed in there. You're going to hold on to stuff for a while. And it's really, and compared to an animal, it's not a very acidic environment. So you're not going to break down those raw meats very fast, which is why you really you need to cook all your meats. I mean, that's not natural. So all, I say all that to let's lead into these plant-based trends and why what you're eating and what you're putting into your body, it really is a life or death decision. So the number one cause of premature death in the United States and really the number one cause of disability is the standard American diet. Um, and I know we've got guys, people from all over the world on this webinar. Uh, I'm just relating it to the U.S., but I'm sure it's similar in all regions of the, of the globe. Uh, this pattern is generally characterized for a high intake of meat, dairy products, eggs, fried foods, refined grains, and refined sugars. Uh, all this with a really a low intake of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. So what I'm saying, roughly one in every five deaths could potentially be saved if human beings simply ate more unrefined plant foods. So let's consider those plant-based diets and the trends that are going on right now and why really what's happening there and why they're so important. So first, eating a plant-based diet, this improves the health of your gut and it allows you to better absorb nutrients. Uh, this, you can absorb the nutrients from the food to support that healthy immune system, reduce inflammation, and fiber that can lower your cholesterol and stabilize your blood sugar, it's great for good bowel management. Plant-based foods, it can reduce inflammation. Plants are essential nutrients that work to resolve inflammation in your body. The same phytochemicals and antioxidants that boost your immune system, they also go around your body neutralizing toxins from pollution, processed food, bacteria, viruses, many more. And then of course, what's most important right now, we are still in a pandemic. I know it's almost over, but we're still in a pandemic. Plant-based foods support your immune system. These plants have essential nutrients that you cannot get from other foods. These vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants from plants, they all help to keep your cells healthy, and your body in balance so that your immune system can function at its best. I know we all want that right now. So these trends, this is leading to a rise in sprout consumption. So the consumers, they are shifting their buying patterns. There's an increase in health consciousness of the consumers, and this is fueling the demand for sprouted grains and seeds in the market. This is due to their high nutritional value. Plant-based diets are increasing, Sprouted grains and seeds are a quick, easy, and inexpensive way to add these powerful nutritional alternatives to animal proteins. So let's look at this fact. According to the Organic Trade Association, 52% of organic consumers are millennials. And then 52% of them are consuming more vegetables than previous generation. So what's that mean? The millennials, they're driving the change in the food industry and shifting their consumption towards retailers who carry natural and healthy grocery assortments. That's an important fact. So again, we're seeing this rise in sprout consumption because the consumers, they're shifting buying patterns. This shift to the healthy food diet, to a plant-based diet, that's increasing the demand for sprouts in the market. The global package sprout market size, we're expecting a growth of 2.2 billion US dollars by 2022. That's an accelerated growth in the market with incremental growth throughout the time. The bean sprout segment, you're gonna see a 66% increase in bean sprout demand. And one of the key trends for this market, 
This will be rising in popularity. The key trend is the vegan diet. It is popping up everywhere. So the trends are on the rise and the customers are demanding these products. We're just simply providing what the customers are looking for. So they're looking for immunity boosters. They're looking for foods that won't just be valued for staving off hunger pains. The future of the food and drink, they're gonna take cues from the supplement market, calling attention to the roles that specific ingredients play in improving your overall health and well being. They're looking for family nutrition. Many adults, they're not only interested in fine tuning their diet, but they're looking for a healthier food option for their entire family. And they're looking for things that their kids are going to eat. And they're trying to find ways to feed it to them. I know I am. And then well-being is being served. So as we speak, the lines are blurring between the supplement aisle and the grocery aisle. And that trend, it's only going to accelerate in 2021. That means that superfoods like broccoli sprouts, they're going to incorporate a foster, they're going to be incorporated to foster a calm headspace and support the immune system. So what products are the customers demanding? Well, let's look at a few of these and then we're going to get into broccoli sprouts in a minute. So bakery companies, they're finding success with breads that have a 30% sprouted vegetable content. This strategy is a great way to give consumers the, uh, the good carbs they want while indulging. And beef burgers, makers of beef burgers, they're using the strategy by incorporating vegetables inside their patties, and then they're serving it to their customers. So they're hiding vegetables in the meat. Why are they doing that? Because the vegetables are good for you and helping the people. And of course, meat substitutes, impossible burgers, um, plant-based burgers, you know, all over the place. People are shifting from meat to plant-based items. And then the sports nutrition industry are always so far ahead. Snack bars and sports drinks, they are rallying to the call. Look at what's on the back of your sports drink. I guarantee you there's going to be loads of plant-based protein available in there. What's that mean? As sprouters, we are providing the solutions that the customers are looking for and allowing you to cultivate a successful business. So what are these sprouts? Why are they so powerful? You know, what's the deal? So sprouts are a condensed source of vitamins A, B, C, and E, and K, antioxidants, biotin, calcium, copper, iron, selenium, potassium, phytochemicals, protein, bioflavonoids, folic acid, niacin, magnesium, magnesium, riboflavin, zinc, and the magic ingredient, so forth. And remember that word because we're about to get into it. Um, you guys all know this because you're all already in the sprout industry, but I wanted to point out to you that we really are. We are playing in such a great area right now. Our sprouts are so important to feeding the world. They can alkalize the body. They can boost the immune system. They're great for weight loss. Um, sprouts are wonderful to help your blood circulation. They're heart friendly. They can promote digestion. And they're wonderful for uh, your skin, your hair. They make you look really good. So now, broccoli sprouts. Why are broccoli sprouts the future of plant-based food? I mean, you already know that sprouts are amazing. How could they get much better? Well, what are broccoli sprouts? They are basically the baby version of broccoli. They're the first green leaves that emerge once the broccoli seed has germinated. Uh, that means once you plant the seed, a few days later, you'll see some greens peek through. Well, that's your sprout. They'll look a lot like other sprouts, like alfalfa, with a white flimsy stem and small green leaves. I mean, how could this small plant be so powerful? Well, let me show you. They're powerful because of an amazing compound called sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is a powerful, powerful compound that your body really needs and craves to help stave off infection. So the many benefits of the broccoli sprouts, they are a result of this amazing compound called sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is a naturally occurring compound in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, and kale. It is activated when vegetables are chopped or chewed, 
the highest levels of sulforaphane are found in raw broccoli sprouts. Raw broccoli sprouts. Sulforaphane has been associated with various health benefits and may have beneficial effects to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and digestion. Those are the big ones, guys. This product is going to help us so much. So you make healthy food choices, you're going to have a healthy body. And when you eat broccoli sprouts, you're going to have a healthy body. Let me show you. So sulforaphane in broccoli has shown in population studies to have anti-cancer effects. It is a, a higher intake of broccoli sprouts can significantly reduce your risk for cancer. It can support your heart health. So forfane may benefit a heart health by reducing the inflammation that leads to the narrowing of arteries, a major cause of heart disease. It can protect against sun damage. Studies have shown that sulforaphane may protect against ultraviolet skin, ultraviolet light, and that causes skin damage and other things that, are, that have cancer-causing properties. It can improve your digestion. So a four-week study showed that adults that eating sulforaphane-rich broccoli sprouts actually improve symptoms of constipation. Uh, these broccoli sprouts are hypoallergenic with a high bioavailability. They're easy to digest, absorb, and assimilate and eliminate. They can boost the immuni immunity because of a nutrient-dense complete protein option that is filled with sulforaphane. They can help you tone and build lean muscle. They support tissue rebuilding and repair. They're beneficial for weight loss because they're lower in calories, but high in fiber and essential nutrients. They go great for clean diets. They're gluten-free and compatible with all diets, especially plant-based diets. And there's an absence of preservatives and antibiotics. This eliminates, virtually eliminates risk to human health. And of course, it's a plant. So you're reducing animal suffering. This shifts the global economy away from the meat industry. And then add broccoli sprouts to it, whether it's a fresh sprout or a powder, you can transform any food and any formulation into a superfood. You can bring loads of nutrients to any recipe. And don't take my word for it. Let's listen to the professionals. So Dr. Paul Tellele of John Hopkins University, he states, three-day-old broccoli sprouts consistently contain 20 to 50 times the amount of chemoprotective compounds that are found in mature broccoli heads. This may offer a simple dietary means of chemically reducing the risk of cancer. Okay, there's one. Let's go to number two, Dr. Joel Furman. When the cell walls of cruciferous vegetables, mainly broccoli sprouts, are broken by blending or chopping, a chemical reaction occurs that converts these sulfur-containing compounds into isothiocyanates, an array of compounds with proven powerful immune-boosting effects and anti-cancer activity. These cruciferous vegetables, they act as the anti-cancer, antiviral, an antibacterial agent of the plant world. So with all that, you know, I'm not sitting here telling everyone that you've got to shift your diets from meat eating to plant eating. That's, I, I can't do it. I, I like a steak, I like a hamburger, but what I'm saying is we need to supplement it. Our customers need to supplement. They don't necessarily need to replace it. So let's look at some trends on that area. A diet culture overhaul. Many people, they're getting tired of these expensive diets and gimmicky supplements. The consumer market is now embracing eating styles that welcome all foods in moderation. By adding broccoli sprouts to your offerings, people can still indulge while providing their body with the necessary vitamins and nutrients. Eating in. All right. So we're still in a pandemic. We're still not gathering Restaurants are barely open. So what's that mean? 40% of Americans, and I'm assuming this is the same worldwide. I know I'm in the States, so I'm sorry. I'm basing most of my facts on the States, but I'm going to willing to bet. Same stat around the globe. 40% of Americans are reported cooking more than the usual since the start of the pandemic. It's because restaurants around the country have faced restrictions, closures, and cooking at home, well, 
it's become kind of practical. You got to eat, can't go out. So it's also, it's people learning it's a healthy, fun, nice thing to do with your family. So this is a great solution for feeding the family while saving money in precarious times. So people are eating at home and they're experimenting. They're trying new things and they're learning, you know, that what they put into their body is going to make them feel better. So what can we do to help? Well, we can provide all the solutions that you need to provide broccoli sprouts and other sprouts to the industry. Uh, if you're already a grower, we can provide you with broccoli seed. We have the highest quality, world's safest sprouting seed. Uh, we have broccoli seed with the highest levels of sulforaphane available on the market. We also provide with cutting edge, state-of-the-art growing equipment that's gonna give you a safe and optimal way to grow broccoli sprouts. If you're a supermarket chain or a restaurant, we can provide you with fresh sprouts. If we can't get it to you, one of our partner growers can. We have growers all over the world. Um, also, our powders. We, we have a full line of sulforaphane-rich broccoli sprout powders. This is a great way to add uh, nutritional products to your supplements, to your drink mixes, to your foods, uh, to anything. It's a wonderful product. A little bit of a look at Sun Garden. Who is Sun Garden? We are the largest global producers of sprout powders and sprouting equipment. We have products in over 60 countries worldwide. We are saving roughly 47,000 liters of water annually compared to traditional agriculture. That's 150 to 300 times higher yield versus traditional agriculture. So that's 900% yield with zero waste. And we do it all in seven days seven days from seed to plate and you can too guys thank you so much i told you it was going to be a little bit of a short presentation uh together we're planting sprouts for a healthier future uh if you want more information if you want to learn more about sulforaphane and broccoli sprouts i highly suggest you go to our website www.sproutnet.com check out the media section. I have scoured the internet and put together a wide variety of um, testimonials uh, on why broccoli sprouts are so good for you. People that have actually taken broccoli sprouts and healed themselves when regular medicine wasn't working. Um, so please go to the website. It's our media section, www.sproutnet.com. And you can see all kinds of different testimonial videos on this subject. With that, let me stop the screen share. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead. Um, there is a Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you would open up that Q&A tab, um, go ahead, type in any questions you may have for me. I'll be glad to answer anything and everything that you might have. Um, let's see here. All right, the first question that's come across uh, is sulforaphane found in organic and conventional broccoli seed? Uh, yes, uh, sulforaphane is found, and actually, uh, sulforaphane, um, sulforaphane is not actually the compound that's found in the broccoli seeds. So, what you've got, just a little background on sulforaphane itself um, glucoraphanin. Uh, is the compound that is found in the seed itself. It is found in all cruciferous vegetables, whether that's broccoli, kale, cabbage. Um, and that glucoraphanin is, uh, once the full-grown sprout is being chewed, chopped, or ground, uh, that's, that glucoraphanin is then mixed with myrosinase. The, the combination of the two products actually um, creates a chemical reaction that forms the sulforaphane inside your body. And that's what is actually going ahead and um, building up those cancer preventing properties. So uh, they are found um, in all of those products. Uh, we actually seen some very high levels of the glucoraphanins and sulforaphanes in organic broccoli seed. We also see it in conventional kale and we see it in uh, conventional broccoli as well. So um, we can help you kind of sort that out. Just talk to your sales rep about that. Um, next question, do you guys ship seeds to Mexico? Uh, yes, uh, we ship, we have been shipping sprouting seed, broccoli seed, um, microgreen seed. 
We ship all over the world and we've been shipping all over the globe since 1979. Uh, we are we have experts in our logistics department. Um, so we are very good at getting it in and helping you clear customs and make sure that everything is in order. Uh, another question uh, wants to know if we could send along sources and studies along with the broccoli slides. Uh, yes, um, I'll be passing out. I'll be following up with everybody after this and sharing the um, a recorded version actually of this live webinar. And if you, we can email directly back and forth if they want to see um, exact sources. Um, there's a wide, wide. Um, repertoire of people that have studied this. Uh, the majority of our information does come from John Hopkins University. Um, they did a lot of studies on broccoli sprouts, but there's been a lot more done. So I'll be glad to help on that and facilitate that with you after this is over. Um, another question, um, optimal growth for broccoli to achieve maximum sulforaphane yield. So it, it said, on the slide uh, about three days um, I've seen and actually we've done some independent studies and you could get away uh, you can still get optimal sulforaphane growth all the way up to five days um, and then there's other ways you can do to alter and actually increase that sulforaphane content in the seed uh, we have a great staff of account executives that can help you kind of optimize your growing and make sure that you're getting the best possible quality product you have Okay. Hey guys, uh, is there any, I'm kind of wrapping it up here. I got a few more questions rolling in, but uh, go ahead. Um, we've got about three minutes left here on our schedule. So if there's any more questions you want answered, go ahead and throw them at me. Um, I will remind you that um, after this is done, you can go to our media section on our website and you can see all kinds of information on broccoli sprouts and broccoli seeds and why that, um, why it's really good for you. Um, this question is about uh, growing practices. What's the optimal piece of equipment to actually grow the broccoli sprouts? Um, the, our favorite piece of equipment for growing broccoli sprouts is our Rototech rotary drum. Uh, it provides the perfect combination of rotation, of light, of water, to gives you a optimal broccoli sprout with mint, it's not going to have a rotted product. It's going to have a nice, fluffy, green, fresh product that will actually uh, stay fresher longer for your customers. Uh, you can then take it from our Rotec. You can use our uh, small wash tank to actually rinse it off, knock off the seed holes. You can apply a little bit of citric acid to it if you want to increase the shelf life. And then you can use our centrifuge to dry it real well and then package it up and ready for it to go to the customers. All right. Another question that just came in, does refrigerating broccoli sprouts result in increased sulforaphane? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I have seen some studies that show um, that actually freezing the broccoli sprouts when, it, when it's done can increase the sulforaphane content. Uh, I don't know how valid they are. Uh, I, I haven't seen any like real scientific studies. It's mostly been YouTube videos and other uh, web searches that showed that you could do this. Um, all I know is uh, as long as you're getting a high quality broccoli sprout and you are in ingesting the sulforaphane and ingesting a good quality sulforaphane, you're going to get the benefits of it. So, you know, do you refrigerate it and increase it? It might. Uh, stress on the plant does tend to increase sulforaphane content so there is some validity behind that but to say 100 percent, that's what you need to do every time i i can't answer that one today so all right that's all the questions that i have uh before i close this out does anybody else out there have any more questions that you might want answered um i can take a few more minutes here if you guys want to discuss anything all right so i guess that's all the questions guys uh it's been a pleasure 
spending this Friday afternoon with everyone. I really appreciate everyone joining me today. I hope um, I hope I was able to help you understand the industry a little bit right now and see. Again, please feel free, shoot me an email at silas.stoddart at sproutnet.com. Um, I'll be glad to uh, answer any questions you might have after this. If you have any comments about the webinar, if there is any topics that you'd like to hear, again, I'm going to be doing these for the rest of 2021. Um, so if there's anything that you're a little concerned about or confused about in the industry, uh, you want me to do some research on it and present it to you, I'd be glad to. So just, you know, give me some feedback. You know, I, otherwise you're going to keep hearing topics that I want to talk about. So <laughs> we, we may not all want that. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a wonderful um, afternoon and a wonderful weekend. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.